This is where I move on to the taboo and controversial topic of overpopulation. I would suggest limiting reproduction rates. Okay, that's opening up a can of worms. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Hannah, the Wife Without Kids. This channel is all about creating a positive community to support you in your choice to live the child-free life. One of my subscribers asked me to react to this video, so here we go. So humans have pretty much reached the tipping point for abrupt climate change to the point where the earth now completely warms itself. Okay, that is one giant fire. Also, I'm not a climate change expert, and I know there's a lot of controversy around climate change, and a lot of people have different opinions about it. I'm not going to get into the controversy that is climate change, but I will just react to this video and give my opinions about it. Also, he's not wearing a shirt. Is that intentional because he's talking about climate change? I just thought maybe he was trying to be funny by not wearing a shirt to be like, yeah, there really is climate change. It's a real thing. Or does he just never wear a shirt in any of his videos? I mean, it doesn't bother me or anything. Anyway, let's keep going. Renewable energy will not save us. Solar energy is dirty industrial technology, which really only exists to expand the lifespan of modern civilization, which ironically is the exact problem to begin with. You know, did you guys know that solar was actually really expensive? I didn't think it was. I thought, well, those solar panels, how expensive can they be? But I looked into it just out of curiosity, not because we have solar or we're getting solar or anything, but the panels are so expensive. And then the energy that they give out for like what you would need for like a normal regular household, like what we live in is insane. You would need a lot of panels. They say that in the long run, it does pay for itself, but I mean, I'm not interested in getting it. I was just a curiosity point for me. If we want a global renewable energy infrastructure, then we also need fossil fuel technology. We either go back to riding horses grow our own crops, attend to them with our own bare hands, don't drive, don't use gas and electric in our homes, don't take vacations, or we accept the inevitable fact that there is nothing left that we can do to avert climate catastrophe. Horses kind of terrify me, to be perfectly honest. I was bit by a horse when I was like 12, and ever since then I'm really scared of horses. I mean, it was my own fault, I was feeding the horse incorrectly, I had like the tree, and I was like going like this, and the horse was just trying to get it, and it bit me, but you know, I didn't know you're supposed to hold your hand flat. So I feel like that's like a really nice movie scene, people like riding horseback down a beach, but in reality, I don't feel like that's what riding horses is really like. On the other hand, the vegetable garden, I think that's cool. I think people could have vegetable gardens. I mean, need a place to grow stuff. And sometimes if you live in the city, that could be hard, but there are community gardens out there. So that's always a nice option. My mom had a vegetable garden growing up. And so when I was a kid, I learned to weed and hoe and water the garden, harvest the vegetables and can and do all that stuff. And I think it's a really good skill to have, but I think so many of us have actually gotten away from it because it's time consuming and some of us don't have the space to do it, or some of us just aren't interested in doing it. I think with everything that's gone on, especially in the past year, people have started to explore the option of having their own gardens again, or at least having something that they can grow in their backyards just to be able to learn how to do it. And it is a pretty valuable skill to have. Given that the majority of our societies have become plagued by the ideologies of narcissism and hedonism, I don't think our end game narrative would consist of anything other than our own inevitable destruction. My car looks nothing like that. My car is so old. <laughs> oh, little known fact about me, I still drive the first car that I ever bought. I've only owned one car in my entire life and it still works, so I still drive it. It's super cheap on gas and the gas prices keep going up. Gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, the reason that we're all in this situation right now is not necessarily because of where we get our energy from. I mean, that's a symptom, but it's not the cause. The root cause is our lust for progress and the must go faster attitude. There are so many things that are contributing to this mess that are separate from where we get our energy from. He does bring up a pretty good point here. I think we are driven by things and material goods and convenience and the latest and the greatest of everything, you know, um, this is an iPhone X, so yeah, no, it's not the newest iPhone, but I think we're quick to dispose of things that still work in favor of the better or the newer or the next model. And maybe it's because we've grown up like that. Maybe it's because we want what other people have. We see the good things that other people have and it makes us want those things. And I'm definitely including myself in this. I'm not just saying people out there and then I'm different because I'm no different. If I think about our home, our home is a big home. It's really big for two people. It wasn't that my desire was to go out and find a big house and buy it. It was just, oh, I like this and it's an option to buy it and we can afford it. So therefore we'll buy it. And I don't 
think it's necessarily bad to have those things. But I think when everybody's doing that on a global scale, then perhaps we take a lot more than we need. It's no use changing the system if we haven't evolved mentally. We all know that to have any chance of stopping climate change, we need to severely decrease our global quality of life. So in simpler terms, basically, we have to go backwards. Well, if we go backwards, most people will inevitably lose their sense of purpose. Yeah, that, that got deep real quick. <laughs> I guess we always think about progression is moving forward. And he's basically saying, actually, progression would be moving backwards because we would be taking better care of the environment. In a sense, we would be using less resources. I think this is a nice idea, but I think we are so used to having stuff that to get people to go backward and not utilize technology and the conveniences that we have would be extremely difficult. I don't even know how you could make that happen. I mean, they would basically have to not create certain resources or people will continue to use them. And what comes after that? Boredom, depression, anger, skyrocketed. I mean, just look at the way things are right now with this virus, you know? Everything that is happening now is what needs to happen to stop climate catastrophe. But people cannot live like this. They get bored and angry. I think where a lot of the depression comes from is people not being able to hang out with the people that you love. You can't hang out with your friends. You can't hang out with your family. You can't go do anything. That's really challenging. But I think, yes, we've gotten used to a certain quality of life. And when part of that is taken away from you, it's pretty natural that people are gonna get bored. Most people are bound by the idea of progress. And in fact, their motivation to behave lawfully depends on it. People need the idea of freedom for them to be content with life. If you take that away from them while the carrot is still on the stick, then they'll revolt. I mean, all you need to do is look at France and Macron's recent green tax and look at what happened because of that. The majority of modern people just cannot slow down without there being consequences as a result. This is that is true. People can't slow down. I will fully agree to that. I am one of those people. I just have to be doing stuff. But here's the thing, even on lockdown, I still stay busy. It's not like I suddenly my life crumbled and I had nothing to do and I couldn't think for myself. And because I couldn't go out to a restaurant or I couldn't go on a trip, I suddenly had no purpose in life. I just cleaned a lot and found other things to occupy my time. So I think people can use their creativity to still stay busy, but staying busy in the sense of being able to go out all the time or take trips or enjoy entertainments that we usually do. When those are taken away, yes, people will have to just use their creativity to come up with something else to do because there always is something else to do. It's just that sometimes maybe we get stuck in this sort of like little circle of this is what we always do. And when we don't have that anymore, we don't know what to do. Now, is that hard to do? Is it a challenge? Sure. But I do think people can do it. It's just that most of the time we don't have to do it. And if we don't have to do it, we don't. And then when we're put into a position where, okay, now life changes and you have to come up with doing something else or doing things in a different way, that can be a bit of a challenge. But I feel like that's a personal growth. Like you can learn something from that. It's not all bad. The fear of change along with an irrational placed value on subjective man-made creations. So if we did take away people's TVs, phones, cars, trucks, shopping malls, then most people would not know what to do with themselves because that's all they've ever known. And that is very true. Yeah, most of us have grown up with devices. I mean, okay, I will say I did not grow up with a cell phone. Well, I did not get a cell phone until I was in my 20s. And I remember all of my friends were getting phones and they would say, oh, you need a phone. How can you survive without a phone? And I just said, I don't need a phone. I've never had a phone. I'm fine without it. And I never saw the need to get a phone. Now, once I got a phone, I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. It's everything. And so now I use it all the time and I've become very dependent on it. But I spent a good majority of my life without it and I survived just fine. I mean, let's be honest, there's been all sorts of generations of people that didn't have running water or dishwashers or robot vacuum cleaners or cell phones or all these conveniences that we just take for granted and they all manage to survive. It's just a different way of living. I think it's just a different mindset. And if you didn't grow up with any of those things and those modern conveniences, you wouldn't know the difference. I just think our expectations change. But I think once you give those things to people and then you try to take them away, that's when there would probably be a mini revolt. <laughs> And so this is where I move on to the taboo and controversial topic of overpopulation. At this point in time, I'm pretty sure that it's too late to solve climate change, but let's just hypothetically assume that it's not and I was required to offer a solution. I would suggest limiting reproduction rates. This is the only viable solution and it harms absolutely nobody. If there were only one billion people on Earth, 
then people could be as ambitious as they please without causing any drastic consequences to the environment. Okay, that's opening up a can of worms. So what do you guys think of that idea? Do you think that people should be limited in how many kids they are allowed to have? Most of us are probably pretty familiar with what happened in 1979 in China. The government implemented a policy to control population and therefore families were only allowed to have one child. But in 2016, China actually abolished this policy for a couple of reasons. One reason was because it needed to combat an aging society. And the second was that the workforce was rapidly shrinking. So I think with things like this, we have to look at both sides of the coin because you may be solving one problem, but then decades later, another problem is created, which then has to be addressed as well. People could live as freely as they wanted to, as long as their decisions didn't revolve around creating another human being. Procreation should be a decision made by the society and it would need peer review first rather than the individual just deciding that they are going to have a baby on a whim. Now I'm sure a lot of people will feel attacked or offended by me saying something like this but let's be honest what other choices do we have at this point in time? I definitely believe in people having the freedom of choice and I know that that can be a good and bad in both ways. I'm a huge advocate for people being child free by choice so it would be really hypocritical for me to suddenly say oh my goodness well, parents can't be parents now and there needs to be some sort of application process before they have children or you know they're not allowed to have children or people must be restricted to only having one child because that would be easy for someone like me to say because I don't want kids so I don't feel like I'm losing out by not having kids but there are so many people that want to be parents and want to have that experience of being a parent so to restrict them or confine them to only having one or two kids or maybe no kids at all Oh, that's pretty controversial. Let me know what you guys think down below. It's a pretty interesting question. And I know I've gotten some comments where people are like, no, people shouldn't be allowed to have kids. There should be an application process. But I feel like if you start taking that rule and applying it to one area in life, then suddenly it's going to be applied to a lot of areas in life. And then I feel like people just lose their freedom to do anything. And like you said, if people lose their freedom to do things in life, they start becoming pretty bitter. Undeniable truth is that if we do not limit reproduction rates, then we will reach our own demise regardless of the system that we live by. It's an inevitable fact of life that everybody has an effect on everyone else. That is why I think it's fair and reasonable to limit reproduction rates. Now he's obviously allowed to have his opinion and I'm allowed to have my opinion. And while I don't totally agree with where he's coming from, I can understand why he's saying that because the number one way to reduce your carbon footprint is actually to not have a child, according to this chart right here. There have been a lot of movements to try to reduce global warming. And I still think it's important that we each as individuals do the things that we can, but to literally tell somebody that they're not allowed to have kids I don't know. I just feel like that that is really infringing on people's personal rights. I guess my question would be, who would be deciding this? What type of committee would be deciding this? Would it be the government making decisions for people? Because I feel like people already have such a big problem with governments getting involved in people's personal lives. What would be the criteria? I have a lot of questions about this. Let's be honest with ourselves. We're not going to stop using fossil fuels and we all know this deep down. I was with Extinction Rebellion in London last year and it was a great force for truth but I couldn't ignore the fact that we're all contributing just by being there. We used phones and computers to organize the event. We took public transport to get there, which relies on fossil fuel production. This is one thing that always confuses me and I'm really glad he brought this up. I understand the idea that they want to come together and support each other and stand for a cause, but then it's almost like they're sabotaging the cause that they're coming together for. I don't know, maybe that's too strong of a word to use to sabotage. Oh, it's counterproductive. It seems counterproductive to use up all these resources to come together to say we shouldn't be using up these resources. I don't have an answer. I'm just saying to me, it's really confusing. And I'm glad he brought that up. He's being straight up and being like, yeah, you know, we're fighting for this, but then we're using the resources that we're saying people shouldn't be using, so. The only solution is to limit reproduction rates. See, not reproducing harms nobody. In fact, it has nothing but net positives, whereas reducing consumption decreases quality of life severely. The I think that that's up for interpretation because if that desire is inside of you to have a baby, and you're told you can't have a baby, I think that could be hurtful and damaging to people, quite honestly. The whole world is focused on the symptoms, but not the seven billion causes. I guess people are scared of social backlash, but I'm not. I agree with him in saying that it's not really socially 
acceptable to say stuff like that. I think if people want to make the choice not to have kids, and I know that some people do, there are some millennials, especially that are saying, I don't want to create a larger carbon footprint, so I'm going to choose not to have a kid the same way that people are choosing to not own a car. To globally say that people shouldn't have kids or really limit who has kids, I just don't think it will go over well, honestly. But this is what he's passionate about and he's speaking out about it. And I think that's a really brave thing to, for somebody to do. I know what has to be done and somebody has to say it. I just feel obligated to suggest a solution at least, you know? We have no choice anyway. We either restrict our numbers now peacefully by choice or we let nature do it for us in future. The fact I think that this should be a choice for people. I think if people are looking at the world and they want to do something big for the world and they want to reduce their carbon footprint and they feel absolutely passionate about not having a child, I think it's a choice that they should do that. I don't think that it should be forced on people. Because while it may solve one problem now, it will create some other issue or problem down the road. Guaranteed. That's just how the world works. This has nothing to do with eugenics, genocide, murder, or anything like that. I'm talking about limiting reproduction rates as a result of choice, not dictatorship. Okay, I'm really glad that he clarified that because as the video was progressing, I was thinking he was saying that like people should be forced into not having children because that's almost how it came across to me. And that could just been the way that I was interpreting it. I definitely think it should be a choice. If people feel that that is something that is in their hearts that they want to do, they should be allowed to make that choice the same way that someone should be allowed to have a child or three or four or 10 if that's what they choose to do. It's better to choose peacefully right now with organized cooperation instead of chaos. This is the sweet period and we're running out of time. You know, it's hard to know what is going to happen in the future. I was just watching a video earlier today, actually, where a scientist in the 1960s was predicting that in the next 15 years, our world was going to be so overpopulated that we were basically going to do ourselves in. Well, it is now 2021 and we're still going so i don't know that things like the end of the world and how quickly we will use up all our resources can really be predicted because for goodness sakes people can't even predict the weather now i'm not saying we're not in a crisis of some sort because i do think we obviously are we've overused so many of the resources in the world and there are definitely going to be some consequences from that but this was a really interesting video it's definitely given me something to think about and definitely made me realize that there are some things that I could probably be doing better in my life to try and not contribute to some of the wastefulness that happens in our world.